you're watching I Am Ultimate's coverage of the 2021 Ultimate Canada Invitational. We're live from Ottawa, Ontario, the UPI Fields. I'm Theo on here with Tushar Singh. Tushar, you're back in the booth. Tim on the camera once again. We got Montreal's BOD versus Toronto's reunion here in the mixed semifinal. Newell with the disc, center of the field. Offensive line here for reunion. Promises to be an exciting game. Battle of Giants from Capitals perspective, a stall down call. We've got Lindo Kudo and Rob Landridge as observers in this game. Rob, former president of Ultimate Canada, I believe, and uh, spends a lot of his time out in the north, and the observer indicates that it is stalled down. That is a turnover to start the game very close. Sideline, great defense by BOD to immediately set the tone. Yeah, Frederic Gay on the mark, and Julie Tremblay. Legend. I've seen her around for a lot of different tournaments here at Tushar, and so we see a lot of these Montreal players bringing their legendary status, and Tremblay walks it in for the score. BOD gets the break right away. That's Le Pagnol to Tremblay, and those are two players that if you play in the Montreal scene or, or played against Montreal teams, you would know those two names. In Quebec in general, I mean, also across Canada, many Absolutely. Canadian players have mentioned they know these teams, uh, all the players on the field. Uh, I mean, I'm highlighting Julie because there's, it's just a, such a familiar style and attitude on the field uh, and off the field as well. So looking forward to this game continuing. We do have 70-minute uh, games today, 2.13. There is a timed half as well that the observers will keep the time on. Uh, we'll, we'll keep a clock running on our end so that we can keep you up to date as well on the tension as it builds in this game. But great to be back in this booth. Uh, many thanks to Rose for being on the previous game and commentary in the previous game, adding a little bit more diversity here in the booth. Uh, we do know that players and coaches tend to prefer playing rather than commentating. Uh, except Theo, who apparently has given up on his retired, career. Retired, retired, retired. Count me in the booth. Catch my podcast with Danny Proby, Hucking A. I'm, I'm doing that now, too short to be honest. I think I'm playing less. As we see, one of BOD's players, Eric Blanchard, that's a storyline we got to talk about <laughs> next point there as we get this one going. Gula to start with for reunion, and that's one we'll look forward to later on. Mikkel to Chong and she drops it a little bobble but also some defense from BOD and now another chance for a break Tremblay going cross field and I'm not sure who that was for that was originally intended for uh, number 11 uh, Camille that's better than I would say a two shot so you got it Camille that was an interesting throw Lauren Green having to just throw up a high stall throw Colantonio with the box out. Ottawa zone goes inside to Chong. And they find the score. So reunion. That's, you get the hold that you need. That's a messy point from both sides uh, to, to start you know, going into the second point of the game. But we've seen this. This has been a trend in if you, if you followed the other two games and watched the other two games this morning. We've had messy starts in general. Uh, let's see if one of the teams pulls away or not right now. Kind of looking pretty stable. But let's talk about Eric Blanchard. Theo, playing on BOD. Where's he going to be playing next week? He is actually going to be playing with Toronto's Union. So that is, we were talking about this off air. Too sure. I think this is one of the bigger storylines. Just someone who's obviously playing with the Union side that there will be a couple players from this reunion squad. Uh, Notably, Jackie Mann, I believe, is playing on Union, and, and there's a couple others, and or they played Union in the past. So the fact that Eric Blanchard has played for Union in the past, but decided to go with this BOD squad, that's just that interesting storyline that we like to see. It is an interesting storyline. I, I have been an advocate, though, for players in Canada moving around and playing as many different diverse club scenes. 
uh, possibilities. Uh, it, it helps overall Team Canada when we send players to Worlds have that existing chemistry. Uh, and in general, it's just more interesting to play at a region and to play with a whole bunch of different folks. Like last weekend, I played with an American team in Montreal. Uh, and Do they fly in or how, how do they get, do you know? Well, they, they uh, did a combination of drive and fly. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're able to do that. We're not able to do uh, much the same there. But Tushar, you've played internationally, I know, and we'll talk about that throughout the broadcast as we get this offensive point started for BOD. They're our first look at their O-line with Prezol on Union veteran coach and Warren Tang out there. And a pick call. Pick call to uh, kind of reset there. Yeah, Delil underneath up the line. Prezol looking for Battaglia. Rocking the visor. I do like it, the lefty. Poach block coming, but interesting throw, and they find it. Prezo finds St. Cyr for the score, and Montreal, you didn't, it w came with a little bit of difficulty, but they're able to get the hold, and so I'm expecting a tight matchup. We've seen it in the first few games that we've had as well, and uh, this is going to be a good one, Tushar, and we were talking earlier about your international experience, but that's a way to just really develop yourself as an ultimate player is play for different teams and then play uh, nationally if you can, right? And then internationally, you've played a few tournaments, I think, overseas. Just a few. I, I, I used to have the opportunity to play internationally quite a bit. Uh, and, I, and I hope in the future I get that opportunity once again. Uh, but the, the reality is that to succeed on the international scene, you need to be going out and playing against a greater variety of players. To, to succeed on the national scene or the USA Ultimate scene, you need to have that experience, the looks, the experience, to recognize as well what's coming your way and how players will play. Uh, and this, these teams that we're looking at right now, there's a lot of experience on the fields. There, this has actually been a very nostalgic series of weeks for me watching some of these older players that were already legends when I started playing, continuing to play on the field. Uh, regardless, let's uh, focus back on this game with that big floaty pull. Cole Antonio in the middle of his end zone right now for reunion as a, there's a stoppage to play a pick down field. Uh, quite a few of those picks. Uh, for those who were on the earlier games, we have spoken about the wind. It is coming from right to left, from essentially the top top right corner of the screen. Inside throw to Gula. Cole Antonio, he's looking like he's ready for a flick hot, but goes underneath to Green. Excuse me, Thorpe, who's actually on that Union squad I mentioned that will be playing next week. So... Some people doing a double dip here, playing both of the Masters and Senior Divisions. Looking for Thorpe. Coming down from the backside is Patra. And BOD, another break opportunity. It's a tough direction to throw from left to right into the wind. So you definitely want to be breaking right to left is what you're saying, right, Tushar? We're, we're likely to see something, uh, like from a deep throw, deep trying to get it end-to-end. -end. It's very difficult. That's why we're going to see this big high pop over here. Patra goes up large on the line and finds Dumont Carey for the grab, but it was all made by Patra, number 87's big grab and reunion looking their body language hands down a little bit from a couple players, but it's early. Maybe not a timeout just yet, but maybe if it goes 4-1, then you call a T.O. Well, we saw that in the first game with uh, at 3-1, there was a timeout call immediately at that point. It didn't necessarily result in an immediate change, but there was the momentum shift because it ended up at 4-4 after that. Uh, right now, 3-1, BOD rolling, not making many mistakes on offense, uh, having a lot of strong defensive pressure. And up, uh, up another break, is that up two breaks already, it feels like. Yeah, Reunion did start on, oh, remember that? On this right to left side, Ryan Newell getting stalled down and BOD able to punch it in right away on their defensive possession. So BOD looking sharp, 
And uh, if you're from Montreal, we thank you for joining us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the two commentators here not able to speak fluent Francais. So uh, we're going to go with the Anglais here, as they say. I don't even know if I'm getting that right there, Tim. So uh, just going with as much French as I know, which is very little. But I uh, appreciate your patience with that, especially yeah. the names. Yeah, Theo, I'm not going to patronize our audience with such comments. Uh, what we're looking at here is two strong national caliber teams, high level teams that have had a hard tournament already. They've already played previously with BOD coming out on top uh, in pool play. Uh, BOD won their pool. So Reunion had to play an extra game is what you're saying because uh, BOD got a bye to the semifinals if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you are correct. Looking up the line. Towing it is Jackie, man. And there's uh, the BOD player. There's immediate concern. Uh, may have had an injury, a pull, something like that on the defensive effort. And looks like she'll be going to the physio tent. Or, or actually medical is going to be coming over uh, very quickly. Uh, does not look to be in a substantial amount of pain right now, but we're going to focus back on this game. Our previous commentator, Rose, is coaching BOD from the sideline. And they are getting their offensive line here. For me, watching this O-line line up in the middle of the screen, red knee brace, shaggy. I remember watching him playing with Mephisto in like 12 years ago or something a like that. A long time. A long time. And uh, I feel like he's only recently made the move to, to Masters. And he was likely Masters age at that time already. So Rose also mentioned this on our previous stream is how players just stay for a long time and then also double up on tournaments. Previously not possible. As the pull hooks and goes out of bound. Center of the field here for BOD. And just want to give a quick clarification. It was actually number eight, Michelle Wang with the score. Got the name wrong there. Roster's coming in. We want to make sure we get the names right. So Michelle Wang with the goal for reunion and BOD now on offense here. The aforementioned Shaggy with the disc. Little nice initiation play from BOD. And we should mention Shaggy's name is Mark. Uh, the nickname, of course. Up the line. That was too easy for BOD. Suzanne Wabrock with the score. That's uh, As you mentioned, that, that was very smooth, very open. BOD open side too, right? Open side, just popped it up the line quick, quick, quick. There's going to need to be some sort of defensive adjustment made here for Reunion. The, these players, some of them are doubling up. The, the new format has actually allowed, if you wanted to play the Grand Masters Tournament last weekend, the Masters Tournament this weekend, and then the Seniors Tournament next weekend. Uh, and there are a few players that are taking advantage no. of that. I was hoping to take advantage of that, however, uh, I have decided that uh, Theo needed help here up in the booth, and someone had to actually produce this. Uh, that, is, that is a true point. That is a true point. Uh, while I'm at it, uh, thank you to the Ultimate Canada staff. Uh, it has been a rough few years, but they've put together, uh, along with the volunteers, a fantastic experience, a very smooth experience. This has probably been the quickest I've gotten into UPI and played. Also want to thank the, the team I have up here in the booth. We've got Tim on camera. You might remember him from doing a coast to coast tournament bike ride a few years back uh, and ending up in Vancouver, I believe, but started in Halifax Woo. at a tournament and then rode his bike across Canada and it ended at nationals. Uh, so lots of passion up here. And then we've got Theo, which uh, I guess he's passionate about things as well. Somewhat passionate, they say, uh, as we see Ryan Newell picking it up for Union, and we're doing a lot of conversating or conversing, I should say, about Ultimate. I think as we're both in the booth here, 
we just get to reminisce on some memories there too, Shar. Don't you like that? I do. We have to fill the airtime with something right now. Uh, but aside from that, while we wait for this Diz to come back in, should mention that uh, Tio has uh, quite a bit of knowledge about the Toronto players, uh, being that he resides there in in the six, as they call it, right? I think some people call it that. I don't, I don't call it that, but I know some people do. So Toronto TO is my home. Tushar, you're out in uh, Waterloo, Ontario. Is that correct? Or I am. That is home base. Or is it air? Air. Like, no. I know some people live in air. No, thank you. No, no, no thank I, you. I'm north of the 401. Disrespect to air, to the audience. If you're from air, we do apologize. No, we don't. <laughs> but kind of moving into this play as well. Good, uh, good cuts, but BOD, strong defense. Really disrupted that vertical stack. Going up the line. Oh. Kurnia won with the grab. That was good track. Way to bring it in. And that throw into that corner of the end zone is tricky. I, I should also bring up is we have seen quite a few points that go into the front of the end zones, the front corners of the end zones. Uh, a few years back, Matt to Berg, Matt Berg, and I had a stats company. He actually put together the stats product. Uh, and we had heat maps uh, for our... Uh, ulti stat. Well, I don't even remember what it was called well, anymore. Was it ulti? Is it ulti archive or is that a different one? So Matthew Berg still runs uh, ulti archive. He was supposed to be here this weekend, but some family trips and things like that uh, have prevented him from enjoying this tournament experience. But the front corners of the end zones disproportionately get points when you're closer. Well, really across any of the game, and it's because that either the cut from the stack or a handler cut up to that spot is usually always open. It's just a matter of grinding down the defense and that spot becomes open. We have lots and lots of data on it, so there's no use of arguing about it in chat, but we've seen, if we look to remember the last point, uh, previous one as well. It's it been to that sideline, that up the line side, the flick side for a reunion going right to left on your screen. So I definitely don't want to debate that. Uh, those in the chat can debate who's going to win. So maybe if you're in the chat, I can't see the chat right now, but if you want to uh, put down who you think is going to win, then you can do that. Blanchard, excuse me, Cantone cutting downfield. Both of them had uh, the man buns going on or the ponytail, so I got them mixed up there. Zimmerell, Shaggy to Blanchard. Not used to seeing him in the BOD right, right there, but he throws it up. Delil. High stall count. It's very cloggy. End zone is spread out. Yeah, not sure if BOD wants to settle into a vertical stack or what's happening here, but you're right, a little cloggy. Zimmerl looking for Blanchard. And he'll find Cantone for the score. A little Blanchard to Cantone. And Blanchard punching in the face of Reunion right now with the assist. What I liked about Blanchard there, and we saw this in a few of the other games, is that as Blanchard cut across, he knew how close the end zone was, but he maintained eye contact on the disc, maintained getting possession, rather than attempting to jump it in. Uh, known Eric almost his entire ultimate career. Very steady, calm player. There are moments where he will be energized, but very steady on the field. And rather than try and just get the point himself, he took it easy, and then break side throw. We noted that earlier in the second broadcast we did in the open final, there was a drop because of that exact thing that you mentioned. Someone trying to toe the line, and they dropped it and didn't look at where they were going. So I totally get what you were saying. And uh, this, I don't know about you or, or those in the audience, but this game has flown by. It's 5-3, and it feels like it honestly just started. It's been a lot of quick points, right? It's been a lot of quick points. Something uh, we've noted some uneasiness in the other two games. This game remains close uh, at this point, which and is smooth too. Smooth, enjoyable to see uh, with about 50 minutes remaining in this final. BOD set to pull here, left to right. Double zeros, Le Pagnol. Your BOD chance from the sideline, trying to fire up the D squad here. 
Newell. Little side sack initiation. Newell activated upfield as well. Pinar over to Henderson. Former GOAT player bringing some of that experience over to this team. And all these players having played pretty high levels. A lot of union as Henderson throwing it up high stall count. And that's going to edge out of bounds. So, BOD, are you calling a timeout here, you think, Tushar? Or are they just going to run their D-line offense like they've been doing all game? They're going to run their D-line offense right now to see what happens. They're up 5-3. They're up two breaks. There's no reason to change right now. If they go and get this third break, if it was 6-3 or 6-4, I might take a timeout there to make sure I got half. Mm. We're getting the insights from Tushar here from the booth. Had Rosemary earlier, and or Rose, so like the different people bringing the color for you. Okay, looking for options. Repanyol. And that disc is curling over. Going up high for it. Blah, blah, blah. So this is where if you have it, well, he needs to reset. Yeah, this is where the timeout would come in handy. And the, and the, the, you said it right there. High stall count timeout, though. So if you're going in on this now, BOD obviously going to be setting up their, their offense, but it's going to have to be a quick reset, maybe a quick point. And then on dark, you know that's the, the situation. You know the two they're going on. So you have to actually do your shutdown. So real... Real ability for Reunion right now to actually shut this down. And this is a good opportunity for them. If they get the turn, they got to punch it deep. They have not been going deep as consistently as BOD has in the other direction. And it's downwind. They need to do that. Now, sitting up here in the commentary booth, I can sit here and they say need and basically... Easier to armchair. say for you is, is what you're it's, telling it's the audience. Exactly. There. Armchair. But we're trying to give you the options here and show some of the options here with the wind conditions you're not able to experience. Are you armchair commentator is what you're saying? What I recognize is that it's easy to criticize someone on field, but when I, as a player, I know that there's, as a handler or a thrower, I'm evaluating five or six different things at the same time. And those criticisms are not valid. I hear what you're saying as we see BOD Got a vertical stack, isolating Julie Tremblay. Mathieu BB, as they call him, number eight, with the disc for BOD. <laughs> Lefty in to Tremblay, and easy does it. And BOD up 6-3 as the wind picks up here. You can tell by our mics. So wind picking up, extremely gutsy throw, but confidence. These players... And this is also why I'm not prone to criticize these players. These are elite, top-level players. If they don't see someone on the field, that isn't because they're, they didn't see them or ignore them they're, or, or made a mistake. They, they genuinely thought it was a bad decision. But so far, BOD doesn't seem like they can do anything wrong. Up three breaks. We see Reunion having a whole new line there, two shards, so... The O-line just for Union just came off, and we see a whole new group out there. I see Meikle, Newman, Thorpe, Lauren Green. So four female matching players for this Union line. As you talked about that mixture, right? Teams going to have to carry the generally the same number of uh, players for each gender just so that because of that switch, right? That, that new rule that we have. And it's a, it's a good new rule in order to try and get that mix. Uh, I recall going and putting together a team for uh, Team Canada Beach and trying to achieve that. And then uh, Jeremy Norton talking some sense into me saying, yeah, it's, it's nice for you to try and do that, but the reality is that that's not the rules of the game. And now that the rules of the game essentially ask or try and force us to do that, uh, you're able to get equal participation. Miko, and I'm gonna have, I have a question for you after about this two shot that I'm gonna ask you on the stream. So wait until the next uh, break and I'll ask you a spicy question right here. But right now, Miko, guarded by Rob Gillis, number 18, a BOD. Some movement downfield is gonna come in a stall six as we see from Linda Kudo. 
Inside throw. Knocked down. The confidence from these BOD players and their fitness for defense is impressive. Yes, I, I would definitely echo that for sure. Julie Tremblay is putting in a lot of work on the defensive line for BOD. Saw her a few years ago with Montreal Old Stars when they uh, won the Canadian Championship a few years back. Blanchard, low throw, scoops it up. BOD, BOD can take half here, Tushar. They can take half. Uh, there is a call on the far side of the field, so this is all going to stop and come back. And very messy uh, poach offense or poach defense from Reunion. There appears to be an intent to catch up, but there is no way that was that much space, having watched it from up here. I'm trying to watch the full field, Theo. You're trying not to just zoom in on the disc, which I like. Uh, sometimes when you're watching Ultimate, it's good to see what's going on. And for any of the young players, maybe veterans of the game as well, I cannot uh, recommend more uh, game film. Just watch game film. Watch the I Am Ultimate streams from the past. You know, Tushar, the ones that you used to film. Because you can learn a lot from different players, different play styles as well. Tremblay finds Dumont Carey for the score and the break. BOD takes half 7-3. Wow, wow, wow. And Tushar, before we go on break here, what does Reunion need to do to come back in this game? Because they just got hit in the mouth, 7-3. Yeah, this is a very difficult start to the game for them, and we're already halfway through. BOD only needs six points in order to win. We've got 10 points there for Reunion. Uh, the efficiency on BOD has also been higher than any of the other games. We're not even halfway through time. Wow. Right, like we've got 45 minutes or so remaining in the game. Uh, there, the answer needs to be, or or reunion needs to figure out how to essentially move that disc up the field. They're they're playing very deep as well, so the throws are longer. So BOD has forced that out of them. I'll be interested in knowing as well what the adjustments from the BOD side are going to be coming into this game. There's a lot of conversation going on amongst the leadership of BOD whereas the other players are, are recharging. Reunion's having a whole team chat. So the intent as well, as you can look at both these sides, is BOD is making adjustments for the second half, but not as a whole team. As of yet, they're having a discussion. Reunion believes there's a full team issue. So let's go and take a little bit of a break into halftime. Thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, we will be back in uh, three minutes.
You're watching I Am Ultimate's coverage of the 2021 Ultimate Canada Invitational Mixed Master Semifinal between Montreal's BOD and Toronto's Reunion. Theo Wan here with Tushar Singh, Tim Ambry on the cameras. Ariel, one of the passionate volunteers here, just informed us of a score update. 5-2 for Epoch over Forever Young in the other semifinals. So it could be, don't want to speak into existence just yet, but could be an all-Montreal final. But there's lots of game left. And before this point gets started, Tushar, I have a quick question for you. Because I, I said I would ask you a spicy question. The spicy question was, should Mixed go to three-on-three three for each gender and go sixes? So then it's fully equal every time on the field. I think every division should go sixes. Okay. More, than, more than just mix. Certainly it helps with the mix size. As Shaggy puts it deep. Looking for Cantone out of half. And that is just deflating for Reunion. Cantone going deep. And wow, oh wow. BOD is putting on a show about offensive precision because they've had very few turnovers and their hucks are dialed in. Yeah, it's... It's been impressive to watch BOD come into this game and just be on point from the get-go, especially having had no warm-up game going into this. So BOD came into this game cold as opposed to Reunion, I believe, who had a... They had a game the first uh, time slot that we would have uh, done a game, and then they had a bye, but... Even still, they have the extra game, and that's got obviously going to impact you in some way in the legs. Uh, absolutely. And so there was that cool-down period, which is, can be tough to recover from. I'm getting informed. Reunion, big win over Happy Campers, 10-9. So both play-in games there for the semifinals in mixed. Very close, and that's what we want to see. And Tushar, I've asked you this before, but now if you're Reunion, what are you, what are you trying to do here? Like, things are not gone away from you just yet. There's a lot of time because BOD scored so quickly, mm -hmm. but it's going to have to start soon, right? You can't really wait any longer down A3. No, body language isn't great. The body language at halftime wasn't great that people went out and actually threw. Uh, it's a very short half as well with observers around. They will keep you on time, so you can't even extend and get an extra few minutes out of there. BOD very relaxed, has the confidence. Reunion, though, appear to still be a pretty young team in comparison. So... It's masters but young is what you're saying young and masters so it's only this year right like every year they can get better and we're only at eight three right now there's plenty of time in this game for things to turn around and there's a pick call and a turn because it was not recognized by the thrower yeah he had a cornea one open but decided not to hit her and then instead there was some messiness downfield that Beauty looking for options. Le Pagnol looking for someone. Tough direction to throw in as well to that particular corner. But looks to put it. Puts a laser. And again, got a little piece on the disc. But that was always turning over as we've seen going in that direction today. Yeah, so you would think that maybe teams would, maybe teams that haven't played, especially on this field, this field specifically, don't know what to adjust, but that's where, as you mentioned, throwing at half helps as a call downfield. And a pick call. Ryan picking up the disc very quickly. The stack was set, but the, the curving cut just a little bit too tight to the stack. Finds more. Taylor bumped on the throw, and I think he was trying to do that throw and go, but you liked... I, Personally, would like to see him throw that with a flick instead of a backhand as he gets it out to Newell. Newell's going to look deeper. Paskowicz, and he will score. Newell to Paskowicz. If you're a Reunion fan the audience, you need that one. Now it's 8-4. You need that one, and they need to throw that one. They should try and throw that one more often because they have those throws. Newell's got it. Miko's got it. Plenty of their handlers have got that distance on that side of the field and the wind will assist them, and they have the speed as well. Just have to open things up a little bit. So then conversely, what about on this left to right side? What do they need to do on defense if they get a turn from BOD? That's an interesting, we, have, we haven't seen many people score there on too much distance going left to right. There have been a few blady hucks. If there is room, you just have to 
give it as much as you can. So the cuts need to start a little bit more shallow. Whereas when you're going the other direction, we're seeing the, the cuts start in the mid to deeper distances. But switching around and having a, a shallower cut starting point will allow that space to open up and give a little bit of confidence to the, to the thrower. Yeah, so BOD definitely has the advantage right now going right to left on offense. And they, this previous offensive point, threw it out. Zimmerall Shaggy, as he's known, throwing it out to Cantone for an easy score at a half. And that was, could be deflating, but Ryun able to get the score. So now let's see what their defensive line can do. Miko with the Michigan hat on. Have to give a shout out because I'm a Michigan State fan, so I don't want to really see that. But, you know, it's all good. As uh, Zimmerall has the disc. Cantone working, faking deep, and I think they were scared because he had gone deep earlier in this game. So good adjustment from Cantone. Impressive just speed and how quickly he yeah. changed direction. But Shaggy going up line. I'm excited. And you hear, yeah, Shaggy chance as well. As he can throw it, but he can also cruise in for the score. Wavrock with the assist. And it is now 9-4. This game is flying by. BOD's been very efficient on their points. Extremely efficient. And I'm very impressed. And it'll be interesting to see what that final is like. Unfortunately, we can't bring you that mixed final. Uh, but we will try and keep you up to date on the score. Next weekend will also be hectic. Uh, we will have a little bit more diversity in the booth. Jordan Marin going to be joining us uh, for a few of the games. Uh, Theo Wan as well, you may know him, joining uh, joining as well from time to time. And uh, we'll see who else we can we can bring in. The Ultimate Community has really stepped up to put this particular stream on. Uh, Tim joining the, the team. Tim yesterday. Ambery, let's go. Big shout out. As we see uh, Danny Saunders walking by, shout out to him. Terry Lynn. Andrew Bachelor, Marco, and the rest of the team putting on this event, putting many, many hours. We do appreciate it. Danny is blushing from year to year right now as he walks by. So, but we do appreciate all their work, too, Shard. I don't say that like yeah, they, we do sarcastically. Right. They put in a lot of work, and if you see them or know them online, sh shoot them a message. Just thank them for their work because they're really trying to help keep the community going with these events and. Uh, you know, we've been off for so long now to see all these players back at UPI, a, a tournament that, or a place I've played many a time here at No Borders. Really nice to see as Earl, for a reunion, goes around, Paskowicz. There's a little bit of miscommunication on the BOD defense there. Uh, that bobble assisted in uh, getting that defender, allowing that defender to catch up. I believe that was Numero Kans Janik. St. Cyr, yeah. Uh, was was catching up to her player uh, at that point. So, and then the throw over the top, it's a little bit bladey. You can let it float on that side. A lot of these BOD players having played for Lab as a short field turnover gives Reunion the disc. Earl pushes the player out of the way, trying to get the disc quickly. Learn. Henderson not in, called by Linda Kudo, the observer. And Blanchard there going body to body with Henderson. These two players, they might know each other a little bit. I don't know if they're, did their paths cross on the GOAT side? I don't know if that, uh, I'm sure they've seen each other in league or other things. So Henderson goes around to Paskovich for the score. Reunion trying to hold on. Hold they do, but you need to get some breaks. Yeah, that was, uh, Beauty's not necessarily their cleanest offense there on the defense. I think that's a little bit strange, but everyone gets a few. And then close to the end zone, very physical from Eric Blanchard. Lots of contact. I think their observers are noting it down, uh, but not, not many complaints from, from Sean. And their paths uh, didn't cross because uh, Blanchard did not play on, on GOAT. He's been a, a mixed player. Oh, well, I'm being told one season. Yeah, I was gonna say I know Blanchard did like you know one 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 year dip into the goat, Got the it. goat waters, but not like a long time goat player. So I highly doubt that their paths would have crossed. But this is why Tushar and I we got a fact checker in the booth and Tim Ambry. He brings the knowledge. 
and we're actually going to see, if I'm not mistaken, Tim on the mic for the women's final. So Tim's been a silent partner here on the camera, but you're going to hear the sweet, sweet voice of Tim Amory next game. So we got this exciting mixed matchup. We got women's masters, and then next week you got some games on Saturday and Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, today, or this weekend was only Sunday, but we got both coming up. Yeah, next weekend we're aiming for coverage on both days and uh, excited to bring you both days and zone from reunion interesting choice i do like it maybe because uh bod's been shooting those downfield hucks really well they are deciding to maybe take that away a little bit especially zimmerell shaggy with the throws uh, well, we've seen this with the other final the mixed game that we had the quarterfinal the quarterfinal yeah uh, this morning when there were four women on that team's preferred zone. Interesting. That is a very interesting to note as we see some BOD players telling some of their teammates to come back because they're so far down. Open throw, bobbled and dropped. Lauren Hunt can't get there. And now Reunion, here's your chance for a break. Get some momentum going. Hutchins over to Newman. Blazing underneath his chin, doesn't get it. Miko getting harassed on the mark a little bit, and that is a foul. Getting bodied a little bit on the mark. You're here in uh, two Mikos. They uh, are a married couple. I should probably specify which one. You're right. That's like when you have the siblings on the field, eh? Green. Him with some big fakes. Finds Hutchins, and if you're reunion, you gotta be patient here. They're going left to right. If you can get this break, that'd be huge, because then you're going right to left on defense. Can they get it? Stacy Miko looking for green. As I say that, too far for her to go with the left hand. Shaggy's got it immediately. BOD's moving it right away, and because it's in match defense, they have more room to move it compared to the zone. Zimmerl, I, I feel like he's always looking huck, but this time he goes underneath to Wavrock, who's had a couple, who's had a goal and an assist so far. They're just moving it up that sideline. So often you're told not to do it, but if it's open, you take it. And BOD makes it 10. Shaggy with his second point of the game. That is correct. Two goals and assists for him. Prezo with his second assist of the game and making it. 10-5, doubling up the reunion side. How much time do we got left here, Tushar, just to update the audience? Update me as well, because I don't know. We have about 25 minutes remaining in this game. It appears to be plenty of time with BOD's efficiency to... You just got to break, 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 right? You just got to do some breaks. Three points, if they are even switching yeah. or swapping points, six points in 25 minutes, quite possible. So it looks like we'll be going to score a cap. Uh, in this game. Which we have not seen so far. Oh, no, that's not true. Second game. Yeah, last game that we did, did did do that, but it was right on the horn as well. So BOD analyzing that a little bit more there. That was a, a different set of players, a mix of players. We've now got their, on defense right now, I'd say their power line. Okay. Coming in, but they are, they're making the call and they are going with four men, three women. So you asked me earlier is you know about sixes, and I do prefer it everywhere. I think for sure mixed because uh, that's something that always, um, I don't want to say bother me, but I always wondered, like, we call it mixed, but then you have uh, four of one gender on and three of the other. Why don't you just make it equal kind of thing? I always remember with volleyball, It'd be like co-ed volleyball, but there'd be four male players on and two female players. And I don't think that's really like a, a, a fully co-ed thing. So that was always something for me. I, I would want to see sixes played out, but we'll talk about that after this point here. Newell going breakside to Taylor. Newell had a smooth huck earlier. See if he can dial it up, especially on this right to left sideline. Falling down a couple times. Lauren Tang. Throw was way too inside, and it gets knocked down by Kamire. 
Foul called. There's injury, an injury. Injury, I should say. Yeah, it looked like there was a foul signal, but it's actually an injury there on Camire. Yeah, there's an injury substitution happening. If you're newer to this game, when a team has an injury, the other team can make a substitution as well, a uh, free substitution for any of their players. To, and the intent, of course, is to keep it fair for, for both sides. And uh, Reunion electing to do that right now, putting out number seven, who is not on our list. Jackie, I know who Jackie Mann is, but she is not on the list. That is correct. So it would fool someone like you too, Shar. But nothing gets past uh, this other commentator here. I'm just kidding. But the Reunion defense now, or excuse me, offense needs to step up. And as I say that, time L gets called. We're going to stay on. Normally, I would say let's take a break, Tushar, but let's talk about that six-on-six six thing because that is interesting to me. So you think it should be everywhere, like not just in mixed. You think open and women's on the grass. Is that correct? So there's been quite a bit of conversation about this in the online uh, sphere, right? Online conversation. And it's gone so far as there's been a, some serious conversation I can't specify whom, but on how can we actually test this 6v6 out generally yeah, everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. And the issue you have with 6v6 everywhere is you do need to have a dimensional, a, a change in the field size. Oh, I would keep it the same. So you would have to have a change in the field size. The nice part about 6v6 is that it becomes more affordable and it brings more equity to the sport in general if you go 6v6 everywhere because you can you would also make it a smaller roster cap and you would allow more people, uh, sorry, you would have fewer people going to tournaments, but you would always have more really great people because your bottom end of your roster doesn't really exist anymore, right? Is not playing. The result would also be more teams playing the game. But hey, I'll, I mean, sign me up for that debate. You can debate it there uh, in the chat if the chat's active, I'm not sure, but. Cantone, who had come on to the south side. This would be a break for BOD going left to right on your screen. Wah finds Tremblay, who's had a great game. Goes around to Cantone. And my, oh, my. BOD putting on a clinic of offense right now. And a score 11-5. There's risks being taken close to the end zone. And BOD is not shying away from the contact near the end zone either, or really on any throw. So this is, uh, this is something compared to some of the other teams who normally play in a way to avoid contact. Uh, BOD is playing that. And there's a conversation happening right now with the players in the middle of the pack, both from both teams on that, is are you trying to draw the contact? Are you going into a body position uh, as well? Are you going into the defender? And we haven't seen the call yet this game, but BOD, two points from heading to the finals with just under 20 minutes remaining. Wow, that's like yeah. super efficient. I, I like, I, we have not seen that on the streams yet, and it's pretty amazing to see how uh, quick BOD is working it right now. And we are, we are being a little bit uh, single-sided in this reunion. Just feel like they haven't clicked. And a few more tournaments may do that. Oh, that's an unfortunate rollout, but I don't think there was any touch on that. Looks like it's going to be coming to the front of the end zone. If he had contacted that, it would start at the back of the end oh, zone. Well, that would have been very, uh, very bad for Reunion there. We would have seen potentially a defensive change as well from the BOD side to play much closer to the unders. This is the direction, as we were speaking about as well, that it's tough to huck into it. And Eric Blanchard in the deep spot. And it's a throwaway. Looks like there was miscommunication with one in the stack. Yep. And BOD. BOD gets the score. Le Pagnol finds the end zone. And it's all BOD right now. So from a, just a sideline analysis, it just feels like Reunion is still working on getting their plays in chemistry. A few more practices will likely resolve that. Be interesting to try and see these players back as well next year, see how they develop now that we're running more leagues, that they can start to build that chemistry. Fall leagues are starting, I know. It's, it, 
to be honest, Tusha, I wonder where the summer has gone. I know we were, you know, cooped up a little bit for the summer, but it felt like it went by really fast, and now we're into the fall here. I know next week, beginning of October, it's going to be a little bit chillier ultimate. I'm interested in next week. Next weekend. The weather or just the, the, the in general? The weather. If you're from some other parts of Canada, uh, so southwestern Ontario, leaves are still green everywhere. The drive up to Ottawa, there was some color change as well. Uh, Theo, you were driving in the dark, but... I was definitely driving in the dark, so I did not see the, the leaf change that you were talking about for sure. All right, next up we have the women's final coming on the stream. Please do stay on stream for, for that. Uh, we'll be getting some insightful commentary from Theo and Tim and some horrible camera work for myself. Well, don't say that. No one's going to sign up now. You're gonna, they're going to have the best camera work you've ever seen. Tim Ambry quality on the next broadcast. Women's final. Stella O is in there, and I, we believe it's Berta, but we should double check that before we uh, formally announce it there. And while I have a moment as well, uh, if you're watching from our actual website, uh, iamultimate.com slash live, uh, we, in lieu of asking for donations for ourselves, we are asking that you donate to the uh, National Truth and Reconciliation Center. Uh, As we head back into this game, Reunion working to swing it. This is the direction where they can get a deep, but layout deep from number three, Vincent. Vincent Billado Martin. Oh, with you the got the name. I know, I know. I, I try to do it. Yeah, Tusha, I hate to say it. I think I got the French name right. Billy Dol Martin is with the block there, just trying to practice the, the French names. As we see, BOD chance oh, to. Oh, that's tough. I say it, and then they had a chance to, to bring it to 13, but now reunion going on the right to left side, Earl. And Jackie Mann coming back in with a big cut on the far side. Pasco is going down the line, is blading. And that's the side where you're saying you need to, to float it out, right? This whole sideline, we, we haven't really seen any long throw work on this close sideline going deep in that direction. It's always been on the other side. And that's just because the wind is going to push. With right-handed throwers, it's going to lift the disc and bring it to the, the middle of the end zone. Also a tough direction to work from, but they're giving them the backhand. And Taylor. huge D. Peter Taylor max the disc from Tremblay. And will that give Reunion some momentum here? Down 12-5. Regardless of momentum, they have a game that's coming up after this. This is not the end of their it's tournament. The end. It's true. Earl, doorstep. Man, sells her cut to the break side and brings it back to the open side for the score. 12-6. Jackie Mann. I remember when Jackie was playing university. That well, was a long time ago, though, Tushar. Now, it's, now it's Masters Division. Come on, now. But many of these players having played in the Waterloo region and then moving on to GTA, Waterloo tends to be a, a city that exports more ultimate talent than, uh, than resides there. We certainly have older players that have stuck around. Uh, the old Liquid players, if you recall, um, and then that resulted in Maverick and PPF. Yes, a little moving. history lesson. I like it. And uh, so many of the Queen Peas that played this weekend have those PPF players. And there was a little bit of a gap. And that gap year after that, I, I worked with WADS to try and put up some support. And they created a whiplash team as well as a second secondary touring system. And out of that, then eventually came Crash. Uh, really self-founded, self-organized. Can't take any credit for that component, but Crash have finished very high at World Clubs. Every team has really struggled with pulls into this direction. Left to right, yeah, exactly. We'll see if that changes in the women's final, but. 
BOD, chance to score on offense. You have to work through the reunion zone, but chance to advance to the mixed final. Okay. We will try to get a score update for you if we can, but right now we're tied to being here in the booth. This is an interesting zone look. Lots of space for BOD to move around with the handlers, and they've really shut down the upfield options. We're just looking for one crack, though, and that's potentially coming over the middle. Vitaly and Zimmerell working it really well together, but there are some players poached, especially in the corners of the end zone right now for BOD. We'll see if they decide to attack it. And, and it's blocked by Green. That is an uncharacteristic error. Miko. Looking for Hutchins. And it's knocked away. Full That's field run. He was at the other end, well, pretty much playing in the mid position uh, as a cutter. And great heads up, D. He's feeling it too. He's excited. Arm pump. Battaglia flying in and trying to get BOD their 13th point and a berth into the mixed final. You're right. He definitely full run there. And seems like he's still got the energy. Is Blay working it? With Prezzo and back and forth. Prezzo. Can he toe the line? He does. And Montreal's BOD takes the game 13 to 6. They are headed to the mixed masters final. What exciting action. Tushar, I know we didn't get a chance to do this earlier, but can you let people know if they want to support what's been happening in the stream, what can they do to support what's been going on? If you've been following the stream all day, we have been uh, indicating that we are not accepting donations on our behalf. We would rather that you donate to the National Truth and Reconciliation Center. Uh, the website link is off of imultimate.com slash live. The National Truth and Reconciliation Week is coming up. Uh, next weekend, we will have something related, uh, another charity related that we would prefer you donate to. Uh, the volunteers here that have been volunteering their time, uh, so this game, prior game, commentary, camera, uh, are supportive of this. Uh, but this is something that, in combination with uh, Ultimate Canada's pr approval, uh, we are asking you to donate there rather than us. I'm, I'm happy to financially support this stream and bring Ultimate to you, uh, and I hope that you can uh, support our wider community as a result of that. Uh, so with that, uh, we are going to uh, finish off this game, Theo, and, and uh, go into the next. What are your thoughts on this game? BOD started out hot and just never, never stopped, truthfully, Tushar. They just kept going and Guns are blazing throughout reunion, regrouping there. As we take a look, both teams huddling up and, and talking and a little bit more positive smiles there from Union, which you like to see. They're gonna go into their next game, hopefully with a little chip on their shoulder and BOD flying high into the finals. They get some rest. I think the other semifinals still happening. So that's an advantage for them, but stay tuned. We'll be about half an hour from now. Is that correct? Half an hour before the next game at 1.30 and we'll bring you the women's final. So we'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in to I Am Ultimate's coverage of the Ultimate Canada Invitational. We'll be right back. 